Brandy Powell brings us an up close look at the talk. Kevin, the talk. If you're part of a black family, you've likely experienced it in some way, no matter your generation. For some families, the talk has changed over time, and their journeys are moving them and others forward in unexpected ways. When she becomes a doctor, Najaha Musay wants to focus on social justice. Najaha is a medical school student and mother of two boys, both under 10. I have multiple conversations with my two uh, young sons, uh, two black sons, uh, about racism and systemic injustices. What do you tell them? Primarily, I start with teaching them how to treat other people for themselves, how they should treat others. This single parent says her sons have already faced racial discrimination because they're still young. For her family, the talk right now means celebrating each other's differences. If they ever see any injustice happening to someone else, that they should always speak up and uh, be the voice for those who don't have a voice. And what do you teach them if somebody says something to them? What do you tell them to do? I always tell them to educate the other person. To try and create, she says, understanding and change. It's all about making sure people understand that history. Professor of history and distinguished chair at the University of St. Thomas, Dr. Yahuru Williams. We talk about the talk that black families, brown families have. That didn't just come out of nowhere. What is the history of the talk? Historically, the roots of that are tied to segregations. The modern talk really is a manifestation for most people of the murder of Emmett Till. Emmett Till, a black boy, was lynched in 1955 after being accused of offending a white woman in her family's grocery store in Mississippi. He was 14 years old. There's always been an inherent danger in being black or brown in America. And the talk is a response to really the danger, the physical danger. Dr. Williams is founding director of the university's Racial and Justice Initiative. He defines the talk in part as, quote, a significant grim rite of passage for many African-American youth, particularly, but by no means exclusively, boys and young men. It is a conversation most often initiated by a parent or guardian on the manner in which they should act when in the presence of law enforcement to minimize the potential of being killed or injured based on the long and deadly history of such encounters between police and the African-American community. He goes on to say, youth are instructed not to make any sudden movements to immediately demonstrate compliance. Numerous cases from Minnesota, including George Floyd, he says, illustrate both the need for and the dimensions of the talk and why it remains necessary, end quote. There are people who would say, Right now, there is equality, there is equity for black or brown families to be having the talk with their sons or daughters isn't necessary because we're colorblind. Or if somebody does see color, there's no prejudicial action. What does the research show? A research shows exactly the opposite. Dr. Williams cites a Harvard study that reveals Research demonstrates that black children are far more likely than their white peers to be sentenced as adults and that police officers themselves see black youth as older and more culpable than white youth. I've never worried about getting pulled over by the cops. And when I do, I'm, I've never had a moment where my heart skips a beat. I've never had to talk to my kids about what to do. And my kids are part Mexican, but they look white. Laura Mayo and her husband live in St. Paul, raising their teenage son and daughter. What differences do you see? I don't have to have the talk with them. To have to carry the weight of having the talk with your kid, I can't fathom it. For most people of color, whether you know, you're know you doing something wrong or you're not doing something wrong, the reality is that if you're not aware of the landscape, it actually could put you in a position of putting your life in jeopardy. This is not just with encounters with police officers. This is in everyday occurrences. How so? It's such an important point, Brandy, because when we talk about those everyday occurrences, it's not just law enforcement, but even encounters with other citizens. It applies to retail spaces. It applies to educational spaces. It applies to any space where they could be and sometimes are judged based on the color of their skin. Any misstep in that space with me not being there 
completely grips me with fear. I've always been around soccer. For the Wimberley family, the talk has changed, they say, out of necessity. We first introduce you to parents Mario and Sparkle and their son Cameron and daughter Caden four years ago. Now, how does your family define the talk? You know, since we met, I think it's changed a lot. I think with the last time we spoke, it was more focused on Cameron. It was more focused on um, young black males. And I think what we have seen in the last five years is just a massive shift to include all people and all persons of color. So the conversation we have now um, is with both our children. Devoted soccer player Cameron is now almost 13 years old. I'm just proud to be myself and represent my people and my heritage and where I come from. Caden, now 10, is an avid swimmer. It's terrible how we have to change something based on people's opinion on something and just it's terrible how we have to do certain things to keep ourselves safe. When your parents talk to you, if they have to tell you to be careful about certain things, um, what do you think about that or what does that make you feel inside. I just have to be extra cautious of things I say or things I do or my actions more than say my friend, my friend that's uh, a different skin color than I am and I just think that it shouldn't have to be that way. Cameron's about to start eighth grade. His mom and dad are excited about his future but like any parent want to protect him. We don't want to restrict him because he's a free citizen. He's a, a law-abiding, a great kid, good in school, good athlete. So he should have every privilege and right that, that the country affords everyone else. However, we have to be realistic and let him know, just so he's aware. Like, what does that feel like to have to have the talk with your children? I would say it's exhausting, to be honest. It's just exhausting. Um, in which ways? Just to, to even have a talk. You know, I have uh, we have you know friends that are that are not um, African American or. You know, um, and they understand that we have to tell our children things that they don't. We put our children in a position of power in every situation because they can do anything they want to do, and they see that from their parents. We answer the call. I mean, you guys have been everywhere. We answer the call. We are solution-based people, right? So if we don't like something in a community program, we volunteer to change it. And what change looks like has many layers for the Wimberley family. Cameron and Caden's uncle is a police officer out west. You know, I think it really offers us a unique perspective. His desire has always been to affect change and to affect change in a way that connects people. What is your hope for your kids? I hope that they're, or our, our grandchildren, if, we, if, if we're lucky to have those, they don't have to have the talk, but the reality is they probably will. So, you know, I just want them to, you know, just be free. Freedom, equality. It's things every, every American, every human being wants. The first-hand perspectives of black families amid the talk. Families, as you can see, despite challenges and realities, are making a difference through action to create change. Kevin. Hmm. Brandy. Honesty and really eye-opening accounts about their experiences. Yeah, we hope this story informs and inspires. And if you want to see our previous in-depth reports in this series, go to Conversations About Racism and the Road to Equality at KSTP.com. Kevin. Thank you. Brandy Powell reporting.